It's day two on the Disney Wish. We slept in, and we're already at the dock in NASA. But we're not getting off the ship. Welcome back to our Disney Wish cruise. Today we're treating it like a day at sea, even though it's a Nassau day, just because I've been to Nassau many times. I don't feel the need to go back. So come along as we check out more of the Disney Wish. We've got things like Arendelle, the Frozen Dinner Show tonight. Pirate Night. We're going to check out some more of the themed bars on board. And I believe we also have the Little Mermaid Show this evening. So come with us. We are having breakfast this morning at Marceline Market. I love that they have sinks right here when you walk in to wash your hands. This is the buffet restaurant on deck 11, kind of near the pools. They do breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And it's themed to be a little market Marceline. So each of the different rooms has a different little store. It's super cute in here. Like how adorable is this Remy sign? This neon Remy sign is amazing. This little section is themed to be like a little cafe. The next little shop is Maurice's Mechanical Marvels. So we are in Maurice's workshop. And if you look around, you can find little Easter eggs from the stories. Like look up right there. You've got a clock and a candelabra. I have to assume that's a nod to Lumiere and Cogsworth. You have a rose right here. On this back wall, you've got some schematics from Reese's inventions, including the one that he brings to the fair in the Beauty and the Beast cartoon. There's the music box that is in Be Our Guest Restaurant in Magic Kingdom. There is a bar section in here that sells specialty coffees, which would be an additional cost or alcohol. And it's kind of Alice in Wonderland themed because they've got all the teacups on the wall. And if you look closely in the wallpaper, you might see some characters' faces. There's the Cheshire Cat, there's the White Rabbit, the March Hare, and the Mad Hatter. Oh my gosh, the detail. This next little section is handmade toys and more, and I believe you will recognize the shop owner when we take a look at the shelf. There's Figaro. This is Geppetto's workshop from Pinocchio. So cute, and I already spotted Pinocchio on a shelf all the way across the dining room. There are five stations that range down the left side of Marceline Market, each of them having a distinct set of items to serve for breakfast. So the first, to chef's counter, you have sort of a variety of elevated dishes, including Eggs Benedict. The next, as you go down, you get the, the traditional hot breakfast, a kid's corner, pantry favorites, which can dish things like yogurts, parfaits, and lighter bites. And then there is a cereal section where you're able to pick up all the different types of cereals that you'd like in the morning, as well as the accoutrement to decorate your bowl, including like slivered almonds and fruits. It's a smorgasbord, really, and I think it's time for us to dive in went through all of the little stations here and this restaurant goes back further than I realized. There's also a section called Flowers Flowers and it's so cute and in there they had fresh fruit, they had some more different pastries, they also had made to order omelets in there. Also the bakery is brought to you by Attila the Bun which is one of the ruffians from Tangled and it's really funny because if you look in his little case of bakery goods he has like rolling pins and spatulas and bakery things but then he also has um, Viking weapons so that's kind of funny. And now I'm I'm excited to dive into this lovely breakfast. Cheers. Had a lovely and luxuriating breakfast here at Marceline Market. My favorite thing was a little mini quiche that was sausage and feta and egg and it was delicious. I really enjoyed the Eggs Benny, mm. which shocked me because I did not think Eggs Benny in a mass produced fashion like that would be as tasty as it was. Everything else was good, but it was pretty standard breakfast fare. I will say one thing about this restaurant is that it's not buffet, really. They still serve you everything, which I think is a leftover COVID protocol and is great. But I do think that could end up making this a pretty busy restaurant. So my suggestion, either get here early or do what we did unintentionally and get here late. Yeah. Sleeping in, it's good for you. Pro tips that we definitely meant to do. Yeah, certainly intentional. <laughs> After breakfast, we made our way to the Cove Cafe and Bar, the adult section of the Disney Wish, to grab a beverage and enjoy the infinity pool. One of the biggest hacks I recommend on any Disney cruise is to become a part of the Mug Club. Now, these mugs cost $16 each originally, but they are 21 ounces of beer as opposed to your standard 16 ounce pour. And you're able to refill those for the price and cost of a standard pour, which ranges between $5 and $15 for any of the beers that you can find at the bars on a cruise ship. For the Wish and for any of the other Disney cruise ships, those draft beers are going to be unique per location. Now, there might be some overlap, but it's always fun to look out for some of those unique offerings that you can find bar to bar. We brought our mugs back from our time on the dream, and that's one of the best benefits to the mug club. It works on every Disney ship. You get tokens that allow you to transfer that mug from bar to bar. They can give you a new one when you arrive at the next bar on your stop. And then when you get off the ship, they'll give you a very nice glass mug that is very weighty to take home with you and bring back on your next cruise. And now, since we are not in Nassau, 
We're going to sit back, relax, and um, luxuriate. We had just settled into the infinity pool with our beers, just gotten ourselves some of the complimentary fruit-infused water in the adult section, and then we got a text from guest services. We're going to Palo. Yeah. We actually booked this cruise a little on the last minute side, which meant by the time we booked it, some people were already in their booking window for things like specialty meals, the mixology classes, etc., and there wasn't any spots available at Palo Brunch. But when we got on board, we talked to the guest services team. They actually had a team from Palo available, and we put ourselves on the wait list hoping somebody would cancel. And somebody did. The problem is, Palo is a nice adult restaurant, and we only have 45 minutes, and we look like this when we need to look like this. <sighs> okay, to Palo. On our way to Palo through the Rose, and we will certainly be coming back here to have an evening libation. Both of the signature restaurants here, being Palo and Enchante, are for 18 and older. They are adults only, and they serve exclusive meals that are outside of the standard three meal packages, rotations that you would have on the wish itself. On three night cruises, Enchante offers dinner and dessert, which is a dessert tasting, and on four night cruises, they offer brunch and dinner. Palo is offering brunch and dinner. Now, Palo Steakhouse Brunch is $45 per person, and it features an incredible menu of delightful items, including their egg dishes, some signature pizzas, soups, and I'm, um, I'm very much looking forward to that Parmesan-crusted chicken breast again, and it looks as if the Steakhouse is also Beauty and the Beast themed, because that, oh, looks like Cogsworth's face. You might remember our visit to Paolo on the Disney Dream. While it still has an Italian menu and some of the favorites found on the other menu, this one has a distinct Beauty and the Beast theme that I'm excited to A, C, and B, show you, represented throughout the restaurant. It should also be noted that Paolo does have a dress code. It is semi-formal, so that is no t-shirts, no flip-flops, no swimwear, no sports attire. No ripped jeans. Oh, no ripped jeans. You gotta look kind of fancy. And for us, that's 15 minutes of a frenzied change after the pool. Fancy, if uh, fancy means putting on a collared shirt, then sure, fancy. I think it just means looking nice. Fancy. We were just talking to our server, who is incredibly informative. We love her. And she let us know that both Enchante and Palo Steakhouse are seated around the Rose. And all three of those locations are Beauty and the Beast themed, with the Rose being a little bit more sort of general Beauty and the Beast thematic, while Enchante is themed towards Lumiere, with a lot of candle and light look, while Palo Steakhouse is themed to Cogsworth. So on either side of the Rose, you get a nod to two of the iconic characters from Beauty and the Beast. Even so much so that the interior dining room of Palo shows internal clockwork mechanics represented in a lot of the design work, which is stunning. Your brunch Apollo comes with a complimentary drink. It is either a glass of Prosecco, a mimosa, or a non-alcoholic Bellini. We are mature adults and went with a glass of Prosecco, didn't we? Thank you, Vanna. That's the best job. Another interesting part about the menu here at Apollo is that the brunch menu is nearly identical to what we've seen at other Palo restaurants. But in the evening is when Palo Steakhouse becomes the steakhouse and it has the largest selection of steak on the Disney Wish. <sighs> Sounds like a dream. Ron Swanson's dream. What I'm saying is we're going to have to come on a longer cruise. Is this acceptable to you? Yes. We opted to do the three main dining experiences because they're very unique to the Wish. We've never done them before. But adults can reserve Palo or Enchante during their nights on board for an upgraded, luxurious feel, which I think we'll have to do next time. Taking a look at the Palo menu, it is all you care to enjoy. You can order as much food as you want. Try as many things as you'd like to. There's a lot of things that are very shareable as well because you are going to want to try lots of things. I promise this menu is amazing. So there's an antipasti selection and you have a seafood one where you've got things like a crab claw, lemon marinated shrimp, ahi tuna. Then there's also a more traditional charcuterie situation with some various Italian meats and cheeses. You have your egg section here. There's a couple frittatas, a couple omelets, as well as a variety of poached eggs, kind of your eggs Benny moment. You have some sweet breakfast items like waffles and pancakes. You have their signature pizzas, uh, the flatbreads, as well as the calzone. And she did just let us know you can split the pizza half and half and they're very shareable. So I think we're gonna do that. They also have a couple of soups, which our wonderful server said, if you want them, wait till the end because they're very filling. And a lot of people get the soup thinking it won't be filling and then they're full by the time their entree shows up. 
variety of entrees, again, Italian themed. The most famous entree at Palo is the Parmesan crusted chicken breast. It comes with a creamy risotto. It is to die for. Our server also recommended the lasagna or the veal. They've got ravioli, fish, steak. It's a wonderful meal and I'm about to feast. At the start of Palo brunch, we got the bread service, which is a variety of different pieces. My favorite is this focaccia bread that's got caramelized onions and gorgonzola on it. It is so delicious. It's a little bit sweet because of the caramelized onions and it's got that kind of funkiness from the gorgonzola. I could have eaten a whole loaf of these. Bonus shout out to the goat cheese roll, which, which tasted kind of like a Parker House farm roll with some goat cheese rolled in there. This bread service is a great way to set the tone for your amazing meal. Our first meat is called barasaola, it's cured beef. And then we have prosciutto, coppa, that is pig neck, and salami. The triangle cheese is cacciotta al tartufo, it's basically cheese with black truffles, and then some parmesan cheese along with marinated olives. Enjoy! Thank you. For our anti-pasti selection, we went with the meat and cheese plate, which had a great variety of both meats and cheeses. My personal favorite was the sliced copa, which had a great ratio of fat to meat, and it almost melted in your mouth. And my favorite cheese, which is what I paired with the copa, was the parmesan. And it's a nice hard cheese, sharp flavor, just incredible. I also love that they added olives, which is wild for me to say because I'm not normally an olive guy, but these were nice and added a good acidic tinge to this plate, which was very rich. And then it was on to the egg course. I went with the spinach, asparagus, and Mornay sauce poached eggs, basically an eggs benedict, kind of like an eggs florentine. And my favorite thing about these egg dishes is they ask you how you want your egg cooked. I love a runny, gooey egg, so that's exactly what I asked for, and it was cooked to perfection. I loved the creamy Mornay sauce, which is kind of like almost an Alfredo sauce, a little crunch from the asparagus. This is such a fun twist on eggs benedict. Had it before, loved it again. And for my egg dish, I got the standard, in quotes, egg benedict. It came with rosemary ham and a hollandaise sauce, and my egg was made over medium. The rosemary ham was thinly sliced and flaky and moist and delicious, and I think the hollandaise is probably one of my favorite of the mother sauces, and oh, the slightly toasted English muffin, I just, I just love an eggs benedict. Maybe that's what I'm realizing. I'm just an eggs benny guy. Decided to skip soups and sweet breakfast this time, but we could not pass over some of Palo's signature pizza. Now, a lot of people don't realize you can actually go half and half on their pies, which is exactly what we did. We did half of the goat cheese and sun-dried tomato and half of the secret menu, gorgonzola and grape. It's a tough call because all of Palo's pizzas are amazing, but my favorite has got to be the goat cheese and sun-dried tomato. I'm a huge lover of goat cheese. You've got this beautiful olive oil-based pizza. The crust is always perfect with a little crispness. It's on the thinner side. And then you've got the tanginess from the goat cheese. It's simple, and it is perfect every time. And my favorite pizza on this menu actually isn't on the menu. It's a secret menu item. It is gorgonzola and grape with a grape gastrique. Now, this used to be on the menu previously, but it was removed, and you can still ask for it. The gorgonzola is just mildly fun and it plays a wonderful counterpart to the grape, which is bright and fresh, along with a lightly sweet gastrique. I know it sounds like it shouldn't work, but boy, does it. And now we were on to entrees, and our wonderful server, Christina, encouraged us to try as many things as we had our eyes on, so we narrowed down this extensive list to three choices. We went with the wild mushroom ravioli, the rollatini melanese, and you can simply not go to Palo without getting that Parmesan-crusted chicken breast. Absolutely not. First up was the wild mushroom ravioli. Now, this is mushroom ravioli that's got some cheese inside, served with a Meyer lemon, a nut brown butter, and toasted pine nuts on top. You may know that Alan is deathly allergic to pine nuts, so we almost didn't order this. However, the cast assured us that they would be able to provide it to us allergy-free. So, shout out, as always, to the amazing crew on these ships. It was a very good ravioli. Uh, I liked the brightness from the lemon. There was a savory earthiness from the mushroom. And then the real reason to get ravioli at Palo is for that brown butter sauce. It's not quite as good as the famous squash ravioli on their dinner menu, but it was very good. And it was a good addition to some of the other courses we got. I started with the Rolatini Melanese, which is lightly breaded eggplant filled with prosciutto, sweet ricotta, and mozzarella, as well as a nice bright sauce and aged balsamic spread over top. It was very good. Now, I'm normally not a person who wants to dive into an eggplant dish for my entree, but for this, I made the exception and took the recommendation. It's light with a little bit of sweetness from the tomato sauce, some acidity from the balsamic, and it's just a perfectly balanced dish. Now, would I pick this over the Parmesan crusted chicken? No, but I think it's on par with a lasagna bolognese choice, and I think it's a very, very nice addition to this menu. 
And here she is, friends, in all of her glory. This is the famous Parmesan-crusted chicken breast. It is thinly sliced. It's battered in that Parmesan crust. And then it's got a uh, tomato basil sauce, mozzarella cheese, and creamy risotto. I don't know what they're doing in the Palo Kitchen. I, I mean... It's witchcraft. It sounds so simple, and it is so simple in the flavors. It is chicken. It is cheese. It is risotto. It is tomatoes. But it is perfection every single time. It's just lightly crispy because of that crust. You've got a slightly crispy chicken breast. It is cooked to perfection every time. It retains the moisture. You've got the creamy cheese. And I don't, uh, the risotto, unbelievable. I've never had a dish where every bite is consistent and good. But for this dish, every bite is amazing. You will never have a letdown. I wish I could eat this every day. Same. And somehow, after all of that food, we had room for dessert which I believe is because dessert is in a different part of your stomach, so we needed to fill that up as well. The dessert menu here at Palo is beautifully inspired by an Italian fusion and includes things like a limoncello torta, buttermilk panna cotta pot, and an addition from the bakery that we just had to sample. That addition from the bakery menu is a warm apple cinnamon sticky bun. It's got maple butter frosting and caramelized pecan nuts. Now, I love a cinnamon roll. They're one of my favorite desserts. A lot of people in my family make them, and this was a very good one. It was kind of like a cinnamon roll and an apple pie had a beautiful and delicious sticky baby. My only thing I did not love about this is I wish there was more of that maple butter on there because it was excellent but you had these warm cinnamony apples you had the delicious crunch from the nuts it was a really really good sticky bun and very stick to your ribs very big very shareable so i was glad we just got one for the two of us now in all honesty we were only planning on getting one dessert but christina insisted that we get another and i'm going to butcher its pronunciation so i apologize ahead of time but it is the italian zabaglione and it is a traditional italian dessert with made of eggs sugar and marsala wine it almost has a creme brulee type texture and a sugar coating at the top, which is hardened and caramelized. And it's paired with fresh fruit, strawberries and blueberries, as well as some shortbread crisps. And when I tell you that it was light, ever so slightly sweet, but not sickly sweet, and when paired with the fruit made it taste incredibly fresh, I was so surprised by this. And it is something that I would order again in a heartbeat and would recommend for anybody who is willing to try to give this one a shot. Yeah, that was I'm a so lot. Cool. I'm so full. Worth it was it. good though. It's good. That chicken parm. Unbelievable. The dessert's amazing. Our server, Christina, was fantastic. It's the best of the best in these restaurants, so she was great. And her recommendations, I mean, any server recommendations in these restaurants, when they get to know you and know your tastes, are going to be spot on, and that dessert she recommended us? It was good. <sighs> I would have never picked it. If you are a foodie and you are an adult and you're doing these ships, I love doing brunch the most, um, but the dinners are great as well. I'm already looking forward to our next time aboard the Wish so that we can get dinner at Enchante or Palo. But if you are an adult, I think $45 for that brunch is a steal. It's unbelievable. So, okay. What should we do now? Walk. Yeah. We need to walk. I'm very full. <laughs> for many, many laps around the ship. What if we walk around and play the interactive game? I'm here for it. Let's but, go. But you want to take your heels off. I remember you mentioned how you wanted to take your heels off. I do want to take my heels off. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I didn't wear wedges. Okay, so we are getting ready to go on the uncharted AR or augmented reality adventure here across the Disney Wish because what better way to walk off Palo than playing a game for children? It sounds weird when we say it like that. <laughs> Disney Uncharted Adventure is the newest interactive game. You may remember from our Disney Dream video that there's the Midship Detective Agency, which is interactive, but this is an all new AR adventure. Many just told us we're going on a stargazing adventure. So we have to create our little avatar and then we will be apparently sent around the ship. I don't know. Yeah. I feel like something bad's gonna happen. It feels much less intense than when you thought we were solving a murder or committing one, if you'll recall. I do. My gosh, Molly, it's you. Oh, wait, no, you've got to create one. I'm going to be pink with teal hair. I'm going to make me a mammothy person, but I don't want a mustache. Why not? You can have an orange mustache. I'm going to have orange eyes and eyebrows. Yep. This person looks completely sane. And we'll do red lips. You can't differ from the classic. Facial features. Nah, 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 nah. Wait, no, I want to be a leopard or a reptile. I don't know. Wow, it's like I'm looking in a mirror. That's us. <clears throat> that 
is the decision. She's beautiful. She looks just like me. Oh. <laughs> we interrupt your uncharted augmented reality adventure with this random goofy appearance in a pirate outfit. He looks really cute. They have special pirate outfits for tonight, and I took my picture with Goofy because he's the cutest. He is. Agreed. Uh, now back to this adventure. The story so far is that there is a powerful wishing star that is broken into pieces because of dark magic. I'm very stressed, but apparently we are supposed to find all the pieces of the star and restore the wishing star so that good magic can prevail. This feels like a lot of pressure. Yeah, I don't know if we're qualified for this, but we will try. We are certainly not. Well, I don't even know how to do it, but yeah, Minnie we haven't will gotten tell there us. Yet. Captain Minnie will tell us. We are off to deck 11 to the Marceline Market, as instructed by our app, and I've lost Molly. Um, oh, thank you. I went to the Wishing Star Cafe, and I got a spot. There are a couple of coffee shops around the Wish. I was just at the Wishing Star Cafe, which is Pinocchio themed. It's got a beautiful mosaic from the film. But um, these coffees are not included with the package. These are just lattes, but they have cappuccinos and cocktails and all kinds of things. But they also give us a coffee fanatic card right here. And if you buy five coffees, you get one free. So. And we are nothing if not coffee fanatics. Exactly. I know it's very important to go save the Wishing Star, but I have to pause and say I'm obsessed with this picture of these kids founding as Flynn and Rapunzel outside the Untangled Salon. Made it to deck 11, where we are supposed to find the Marceline Market sign on the starboard side of the ship. So we are looking. Ah, I found it. Everybody ready? We're ready. did a good job. I absolutely crushed. My musicality was second to none. Also, this marketplace is so cute. I know we were here earlier, but I just realized that the painting is all the different spots. Oh, that's so sweet. Love that. All right, off to deck 10 to find a bright light. Yeah. Princess Tiana. <clears throat> Can I wonder her hand? If anyone should help Tiana cook, it's me. Diced tomatoes. tomatoes. Got it. Good job. Nailed it. Trimp. Okra. I bet kids don't know what okra is. Bay leaf. Crushing. You're welcome, Tiana. I do know how to add hot sauce to stuff. What do you. Just tilt and pour. <laughs> I was trying to be more creative. True. There you go. There you go. You got it. This is going well for you. You're doing great. Oh, now, now you're spilling it. Cooking is exhausting. Slow down a little. Help a cool it down. God. God. He is so needy. Oh, yeah. This is going to cool that thing off. You're crushing it. There you go. There you go. Look at that. You turn the temperature down. You're doing it. All right, now wait, you're almost there. Stop. There you go. Ooh. You did great. Tiana said so. But did we save the star? I don't know. Don't worry about that. We made great gumbo, though. And I saw Daisy. Hi, Daisy. And so are you. Look at you. Look you. One, two, three, over here. And one, two, three. Okay. Beautiful. Oh! You got the star piece. It's very exciting. Look at the group score. We did so well. And the trumpet. 
So we officially finished one quest of the multi-pronged quest to save the star? Yeah, in Disney Uncharted Adventures. Yes. I thought it was fun. I do think I like the detective agency on the dream more because it's faster paced. This had a lot of exposition and I understand this game is meant for children, so that's probably why, but I felt like there was a lot of explaining to me what was happening and how to play the games. And it's like, okay, I just want to play the game. I also think I like the theme better over at Detective Agency. The one we did on camera was like a villain stole something and it was like a whodunit kind of thing. And you had a physical map and a pencil and you were using clues to narrow down who the criminal was. I like that more than just kind of the vague, something bad happened, now go get these pieces. Um, so I think it's fun. I think if you're a gamer, I think if you've got kids, if you've got a day at sea, it's a really fun way to kind of run all over the ship, but I do think I like the other one better. But try this one out. It's fun. It's something to do. Yeah. Surprise. We're fancy again. We are headed up to get a cocktail before we see tonight's show, which is The Little Mermaid, which I'm a little scared about. But it's also pirate night, so we get to see the pirate night fireworks, and then we are having dinner in Arendelle. As we made our way into the beautiful atrium, we have uh, a number of pirates set to meet with you. We've got Captain Hook and Chip and Dale and their piratey best. I'm thrilled. Oh my gosh, look, it's Minnie. She's a Commodore. Pirate night is a tradition aboard the Disney Cruise Line. A lot of people get very into it and bring full on pirate costumes. I was a little sad because aboard the Disney Dream for Pirate Night, they gave us Mickey pirate bandanas, and I asked about this cruise, and they said they don't give them. So I just think the bandanas are like a nice gesture to help everybody get in theme, even if you didn't know or bring anything Pirate Night. We are going to grab our pre-show drink here at the Enchanted Sword Cafe. This is another one of the coffee bars, but they have cocktails as well, and it's just pretty neat that there is something themed to Sword of the Stone, which never gets anything themed to it. While the Enchanted Sword Cafe is both a cocktail bar and a coffee bar, and your bartender can make you almost any cocktail you would prefer of the classics, the specialty beverages are all coffee-infused. So we've decided to go with that, being lovers of both caffeine and... Cocktails? Yes. Did you not want to say alcohol? Yep, not that overtly. <laughs> Obviously trying the cold brew drinks. This one is the brew fashioned, which is an old fashioned with cold brew in it. So my dream come true. Should I say my wish come true? Oh, wow. Um, that's delicious. It reminds me of the one at the Festival of the Arts, but it's not as sweet. So I actually like this one better. It's got this blood orange crystallized topper in there and you can really taste that kind of zest hit your nose first then it does taste like strong cold brew but you can taste the bourbon a plus five stars and in this goblet is the brew tonic i'm a little dubious about how gin tastes with coffee but i'm willing to gamble cheers So you start strong with coffee, then you get hit with the herbaceous notes of like mint and the spices, and then it sort of mellows out together. Let me tell you right now, this drink is not for everybody, but if you are a gin lover and a coffee lover, weirdly this works. It shouldn't, but it does. We are on our way back to the Walt Disney Theater to see The Little Mermaid, which is the signature show here on The Wish. Just saw The Little Mermaid. Mm -hmm. It was a show that I saw. I think that some of the underwater effects were really neat how they brought that to life on stage. It's almost an hour long, which is long on a cruise ship. Before the show debuted, they had shared the details that this is a little bit of a twist on The Little Mermaid and that it's a little bit more about Ariel being true to herself and mm -hmm. less looking for love with a man she met 30 minutes ago. The whole show, I was like, okay, when's that gonna happen? When's that gonna happen? Like they peppered it in a little bit that Ariel was special, but then at the very end, they do make it more about Ariel wanting to join the human world and feeling more a part of that world than her undersea world. And she even says, I don't know if I love him, but I feel like I'm home there. So now I'm gonna start crying because that part was really nice. That and was I, really nice. I felt like if you've ever felt like you don't belong somewhere or you're different, yeah. that message 
really resonates. So that was really nice. Spoiler over, the cast was awesome. You can't beat the cast on a Disney cruise, specifically in this show. Ariel was great. Um, she was like Halle Bailey Ariel. She was beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the show stealers for me were Sebastian and, shockingly, Ursula. Oh, both of them? Incredible. Sebastian's vocality? Under oh the my Sea gosh. was the best number. And Poor Unfortunate Souls was like a jazzy number. Long story short, for me on the Disney cruise, I prefer the shows that are a mashup of multiple characters and multiple songs mm -hmm. less than one movie. But, you know, the shows are, are wonderful and part of why you're on a Disney cruise. Absolutely. And it's always great to come out and support the cast because they are incredibly talented and they're here for a reason. So if you have the time, stop by and catch the shows. As a before dinner libation and post show libation, really we're celebrating two things here. We are headed to Nightingales, which is a bar themed after the iconic scene and song in Cinderella, where Cinderella sings sing sweet nightingale while she's cleaning the floors of her stepmother's home uh, you can also see the bubbles represented in the chandelier in the center of the room it is a champagne focused bar with a lot of bubbles on the menu but they also have an interesting selection of martinis as well uh, and one of them is speaking to me taking a look at the nightingales menu as alan said it's very champagne heavy they have a lot of white red and sparkling wines however they also have some signature cocktails most of which include some kind of champagne or wine i decided to give the crystal slipper a whirl which is ciroc vodka chambord boet and chandron ice sparkling wine rose water and then there were some little pomegranate seeds in there as well which did kind of keep getting stuck in my teeth Overall, this drink was very good. It was very balanced, a little on the sweeter side, a little more floral than I'm used to. However, I love the crisp champagne with the ice, and I liked the balance with the vodka. A little bit of sweetness from the Chambord. Not something I would order again. However, it was really fun to try, and if you do lean toward sweeter drinks, I think you'd enjoy it. And from the smoke bubble section of the menu, I went with the Stepmother. It is the Blanton Single Barrel Whiskey, Antica Carpano, and Ginger. They also, as it is from the smoke bubble section of the menu, make a smoke bubble that then bursts on the top of your beverage. This is a twist on a Manhattan. It is very, very nice. Not sweet whatsoever. It allows the whiskey to shine through with just a little bit of enhancement from the ginger. A very easy sipping beverage that was one of my top three favorite beverages on the wish. Yeah, not going to lie. When we went back to Nightingale's later in the night, spoiler alert, I ordered one of these too. Nightingale's hosts a variety of piano players throughout the hours, and we are here for a special set that we saw in the Disney Cruise Line app. There's a piano player going to be performing. Disney in Walt's Time is his set name, so it's all Disney music written and performed before 1966 when Walt Disney passed away because these are songs Walt himself would have heard. As two Disney nerds can't think of a better time to be inside Nightingale's. We dine in Arendelle. This is a frozen themed interactive dinner show. Very excited for both the food and the frozen show. Oh my gosh, we're walking. It looks like the palace. This is so cool. I will say one thing for the ship. They have nailed the theming of the different restaurants. This is gorgeous. I mean, look at the bathroom side. How cute is that? I think we're in the summer Haas. As, as one says. It is beautiful through here. It's Sterling K. Brown. I believe his name is Mateus, but to me, he is Sterling K. Brown. Oh, the wallpaper is so pretty in here. This is awesome. I'm very excited about this right now. Oh, thank, thank you. you. It's so beautiful in here. Okay, I'm obsessed with this restaurant. I just like last night, we're not gonna film our reviews. As we eat, we're going to take detailed notes and then do voiceover later as to not disturb our fellow patrons during the show. But this is adorable, and I cannot wait for the feast to begin. Let's take a look at the menu here in Arendelle. You start with your appetizers. You've got the smorgasbord, which are your hot appetizers, including a salmon dish, an asparagus dish. You've got a couple of salads as well, and some soups. You have Sven's favorite carrot soup, as well as a split pea soup, and then you have your bread service that comes with everyone's meal. Over on the entree side, you are going to have kind of your classics again, but with a Norwegian-inspired twist. You've got a pork tenderloin, a sea bass. You've got the uh, meatballs, likely better than those from Ikea, but not going to lie, we didn't try these ones. There's a chicken and a ribeye as well, a couple of vegetarian dishes, as well as some lighter options like a salmon salad. 
The bread service consists of a hearty six grain bread and an onion dip, but the onion dip is the standout. It's incredibly creamy with good onion flavor and it's acidic without being too vinegary. I am open and I am pleased to be welcoming you to Aaron my appetizer, I went with the Jarlsberg cheese and rosemary ham tart. It featured some gala apples as well as a pear compote. This was good, but honestly not as good as I wanted it to be. It was a little on the drier side, but it did have the nice puff pastry and the thin layers of cheese and ham with the apple. It kind of reminded me of the sandwich at Leal Bakery in France with those same flavors, but it just wasn't quite as flavorful as I wanted it to be. It was a little on the bland side, if I'm being honest. My meal was very much picked by Peter, our server, and when I tell you he didn't miss, he didn't miss. He recommended Elsa's Royal Baked Scallops, and I'm here to tell you I'm not normally a scallops person. This came with a shrimp tarragon bisque, rainbow carrots, leeks, and a fluffy pastry. Imagine a scallop pot pie. It was so good. Very light. Even with the cream sauce, the scallops are very tender, and you didn't get any of the briny or oceany flavor that you would expect from seafood that might have been left out for a while. It was very fresh and incredibly tasty, and as somebody who does not admittedly love seafood, this one really went home for me. For my first entree, I went with the garlic and thyme roasted beef ribeye. It's supposed to come with a double baked potato, buttered broccoli, sweet honey roasted carrots, and a cabernet jus. I did ask Peter though if I could swap for the potatoes that come with the chicken dish, which are duck confit double fried potatoes, and let me tell you, I'm glad I did. The beef ribeye was good. I will admit ribeye is not my favorite cut of meat. It's a little too on the fatty side for me typically, but it had good flavor. You could taste the garlic and thyme, and I love a good cabernet wine sauce. The winner, though, were the duck confit double fried potatoes. Imagine the most crispy and delicious steak fries you've ever had, and that's what we're talking about. Overall, this dish was good, but not a knockout, but I think anyone who likes steak will enjoy it. I was also intrigued by the vegetarian dish, which was Queen Aduna's potato lefset. This had a butter crust, heirloom carrots, spinach, green and white asparagus, baby Brussels sprouts, leeks, and an aquavit Jarlsberg cream. This was a surprise and delight. It was kind of like a vegetable casserole, but served rolled up. Now, I'd had lefse before. It's a sweet treat in Norway and Epcot, but this is nothing like that. It had perfectly cooked vegetables. There was a good combination of crunchy vegetables, plus that Aquavit Jarlsberg cream, which was great. Nice cheesy dish. Honestly, I would pick this again over the prime rib. It wasn't anything over the top as far as unusual flavor goes, but it was just a bunch of really delicious vegetables cooked well in a creamy cheese sauce, and I'm not mad about it. I once again turned my fate over to Peter for our entree, and he recommended the pan-seared Chilean sea bass. That is served with white asparagus, petite leeks, savory spinach, romanesco, peas, kohlrabi, rainbow carrots, seared scallops, pea tendrils, and a mold vinaigrette. Oh my gosh. It was light, buttery, and when I tell you that this was perhaps one of my favorite meals on the ship, it was which is a surprise for me considering it's seafood. And again, I'm not normally a seafood guy, but this was impeccable. Is there any chocolate on the menu? Of course, it's a special chocolate cake and chocolate ice cream for Olaf. Thank you. Enjoy it, okay? Let me know what you think. Stay with your heart. In true Arendelle fashion, the dessert menu here is comprised of cakes, chocolates, and ice cream, much like the great song between Anna Nelson and the first Frozen film. This includes an apple cake, a butter cake, whose name I'm going to probably butcher, which is a kvifert cake, and a troll family rock chocolate bar. For dessert, I wanted to make Elsa proud, plus Peter recommended it, so I got the Trolls Family Rock Chocolate Bar. This is a chocolate cake with pistachio cookie rocks and hibiscus meringue. It was very good, very chocolatey. I will say it's incredibly dense and rich, especially after such a hearty meal. But if you're a chocolate fan, this is going to be a good one for you. It reminded me a lot of a flourless chocolate cake. And for my dessert, I went for the kvifert cake. 
and I'm sorry about the pronunciation. It is the butter cake topped with a baked almond meringue, vanilla cream, and berry compote. It's a very balanced dish, light, buttery as you might hope, and it's not as sweet as you would expect, but it's just a very balanced dessert, and it's not super sweet, rich, or dense to round out a very heavy meal. Okay, so we just finished dinner at Arendelle. We're gonna start with the cons. I think the biggest con of this dinner is that your experience greatly varies depending on where you're seated. We were seated in possibly the worst seat possible. Narnia. <laughs> like the back corner of the restaurant, which as two adults, it's fine. that's fine. But I can imagine if you were seated there and you had kids who wanted to see the show, that could be a little... Less than fine? Yeah, especially because when the show was almost over, I scooted up to the front to get some video because another family had left and I saw how good their seats were from the front row and it was a greatly different experience. So to me, it's kind of a bummer that everybody's paid the same to be on the ship, more or less, <laughs> depending on your cabin, but you were just seated at random, it felt like. And uh, those that were sitting in the front row got a much better view of the show than those sitting in the back row. So I don't love that. Not for the pros. The show itself is actually pretty darn good. I think they were incredibly talented, as with most of the cast for the entertainment on the ship. Stellar. The musicians in particular were amazing. Absolutely. The vocals, the violin, they were incredible. All of the above. Also, as a fan of Frozen and Frozen 2, I really enjoyed it. I think the music from these movies is incredible, so it's really nice to hear it in kind of a Scandinavian folksy style. But just like Marvel last night, if you're not a fan of these movies or this music, this experience will probably be a little lost on you. And the food itself was pretty darn good considering the Disney Cruise. I enjoyed all of the courses that I had. And again, go with the recommendations of your waiters and servers. They are very knowledgeable and uh, Peter, our yeah. server has Shout not steered us wrong yet. I also liked that the characters did come by and interact. I don't want to call it character dining because they don't stop for a long time at every table. And I saw them taking pictures with people, but I don't know that they do like autograph books and stuff. Yeah. But there was a fun little character moment when Olaf came by or Elsa <laughs> came by. It just wasn't like a traditional character dining experience. Yeah, if you're expecting a rotational meet and greet, that just isn't going to happen and that will not meet your expectations here. But Anna and Elsa do meet and greets on the ship, so you can see them otherwise. When push comes to sub, I think I enjoyed this maybe for me, and this is a Marvel fan, a touch more than Marvel. I think overall the food was slightly better than Marvel, but mm -hmm. I think Marvel hated the experience better because everybody got the same one because of the use of video screens. Mm -hmm. However, I love a thematic dinner, and I wasn't mad to be here. Not at all. Avast me it is! It's pirate night aboard the Disney Wish, which means I get to do my very good pirate voice. Arg! We're all so excited for it. Anyway, we are out here at the Pirates Rockin' Parlay Party. There are two different pirate shows on this ship. There's one with Mickey and the gang, and there's a Pirate Rockin' show, which we're here for now. And Excited to rock out with some pirates. They're literally starting a Prince song right now, and then I'm very excited to see the fireworks. the Pirates Rockin' Party was better than the stage show tonight. Captain Red. Captain That's Red. why. I shouldn't say this, but if she started a cult, I'd probably join. I'm obsessed with her. She was amazing. Her voice was insane. Anyway. So the show was great. Um, I think the fireworks that we saw here, again, always ask a crew member where to stand. They know. And 
even if you think you're like, I know best. I know. You don't. You don't. You don't. The crew members do because they see it every <laughs> single time. So they're able to predict exactly what the best spot's going to be. We asked a crew member where to stand, and we had a great overlook down onto the show. And then we just stepped over a few steps to see the actual fireworks, and they were amazing. I think it's so fun that Disney does fireworks at sea. And don't worry, they have, like, genetically engineered the fireworks. Genetically. genetically. They genetically. have engineered the fireworks. They had their Bunsen, Ben, and Baker. <laughs> they are specialty fireworks that don't cause any harm if they fall into the ocean. So... The fireworks are awesome. I love the Pirates of the Caribbean music. I think it's probably my favorite oh, score amazing. of any movie of all time. Way to go, Hans Zimmer. And yeah, true. Klaus Belt, you the man. Um, Klaus Badelt. Klaus Badelt. Klaus Badelt. You two rock. And that music is amazing. Do not miss the fireworks on your Disney cruise. Definitely a highlight for me of this cruise. Absolutely. It's incredible. Okay. I think with that. We're going to go back to Nightingale's and enjoy some piano music. We can't get away from those sweet, sweet jazzy tunes. I do love a piano bar. Most specifically, I love the piano. Mm -hmm. We're going to head back there for a nice way to luxuriate and end the evening, but we have one more day aboard the Disney Wish, so we'll be back with more videos telling you the tale of that day. In the meantime, folks, be sure to like and subscribe if you're new and follow us on all of our socials, and please do not forget to ring that notification bell. And until next time, friends, I'm Molly. And I'm Alan. And it's been so magical. Bye. Avast, mateys. It's been magical with us here at Mammoth Club. Aye. <laughs> well, we didn't make it very far. We haven't even made it to Nightingale's yet. We went into Mickey's main sale, and look what we bought. It's a plush of the towel animals. It's an elephant because it's really close to a mammoth. And a monkey too. I'm dying. It's the cutest thing ever. Okay, now do I guess? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>